Hello once again, welcome to our e-learning for today and this will be our last video for our online learning. Alright, so our lesson for today will be lesson summary and we're going to talk about grammar. Okay, so here are your materials for today. If you are prepared, let's start our lesson. So the schedule for today will be the following. So we finished Sunday vocab summary lesson and the worksheet, the Monday Socrative, and today is Wednesday, we're going to finish grammar summary lesson and you are required to give me or submit to me the required worksheet attaching your class dojo you can send that to my email or you can send a message to class dojo so let's start with the discussion of our lessons so we have finished three major lessons for grammar lessons before so in lesson number one we finished demonstrative and independent pronouns lesson number two we have interrogative pronouns and lesson three we have adjectives and adverbs so let's start with lesson number one demonstrative let's start discussing them so demonstrative pronouns, so what are they? So demonstrative pronoun points out a specific person, place, or a thing. So when you're talking to someone and you're going to point out something, a person, or a place, automatically you're going to use four different demonstrative pronouns. So you can use this, these, that, and those. So when you're using this, you're automatically talking about something or someone that is near you or near us and you're pertaining to singular so which means there's only one thing or person or place so for example uh, you're talking about uh, your paper so you're going to say this is my paper this is my car this is my watch for example when you're holding your watch now if you have a lot of these things uh, you have a lot of watch watches you have papers and books you're going to use the plural form of this and that will be these so when you're talking about something or some someone that is near you and there are many you're all going to use these so you're going to say these cars these papers these books these watches all right so when you're talking to something or someone that is far from you or from us you're automatically going to say that and it will be singular so singular which means you are pertaining to something or someone that is far away from you that is only one so that person that house that restaurant okay so if you have a lot of these things that is something that are far away from you or someone that's far away from you you're going to use the word those so you can say those restaurants those books those chairs those people or oh, you understand do not forget the four demonstrative pronouns this these that and those so let's continue with some examples or practice number one so what are you going to do right now is that you're going to fill in the blanks with correct demonstrative pronouns so Please pause this video and try to answer 1 to 6. So you're going to put this, these, that, and those. So if you're done answering, let me show you the correct answers. So for number 1, blank are my old perfume collections. So you have four options. Again, this, these, that, and those. So you can put these. So why is the answer these? Because you can see the word are here. And you are pertaining to something that is near you. So R for plural. So these. Next, blank is my new puppy. So the correct answer here is this. Because we have only one new puppy and you're pertaining it near to you. So this is my new puppy. Number three, blank are Theo's businesses near the bridge. So you can use the word those. Because there are many things or something. That is far away from you, so you're going to say those are to use your businesses near the bridge. Number four, blank is my favorite story. So you can use this is my favorite story. Number five, kindly get me that paper. And finally, for number six, please help me carry, what's your answer over here? Those chairs over there. Okay, so as you can see over there, which is many, uh, far away from you, and chairs, which means many. So you're going to use those. So those are examples of demonstrative pronouns that are used in uh, sentences. So let's go to the second lesson that we've discussed before, indefinite pronouns. So what are indefinite pronouns? Indefinite pronouns are used to point to something or someone that, that is specific. If you're talking to someone and you're going to point out something or someone that is not particular or not specific, you're going to use indefinite pronouns. Examples of this indefinite pronouns are the following, all, another, any, each, everyone, someone, and none. So, you can use these words if you are not sure what you're pertaining to, alright? So, here are the following indefinite pronouns that we use every day. So, 
they are grouped into singular, plural, or singular or plural. So we can read some examples. We can use another, each, everybody, little, much, nobody, no one, other, somebody, something. For plural, we have both, few, many, others, and several. So for singular or plural, we can have all, any, more, most, none, some, and such. So there are many indefinite pronouns in the internet. You can find them or you can search them if you want more. But these are the words that usually we use them when we are talking. Okay, so let's go to practice number two examples. So what are you going to do right now is to fill in the gaps with the following words. Anyone, everything, someone, many, all, or some. So I want you to put these words correctly here. Okay, so kindly start. So I'm going to give you the correct answers right now. So for number one, we showed them some of our old seeds. So others can be correct, okay? But this is the correct one. So we can also say we showed them all of our old seeds. We showed them many of our old seeds. So but the best answer here is some, okay? For number two, blank people are frightened about the pandemic. So you can say many people are frightened about the pandemic. You can also write all people or you can say some people are frightened about the pandemic. Number three, all of them were good in cooking except me. So the correct answer here is all. Number four, blank is going well for now. So you can write everything is going on well. And number five, I promise not to tell blank about this. So not to tell anyone about this. And finally, there's blank at our backyard. So the correct answer here is someone at our backyard. So these are some examples of sentences using indefinite pronouns. All right. So let's go to the third lesson that we finished before, interrogative pronouns. So interrogative pronouns, they are pronouns that ask a question. So it's very easy. They ask a question. So we have only five examples of interrogative pronouns and you need to memorize them. Who, whom, which, what, and whose. So we have only this. So it's quite easy to memorize them because all starts in WH. Sometimes whatsoever and whichever are used as interrogative pronouns. Okay. So the main examples are the following, this five, but sometimes whatsoever and whichever are used as interrogative pronouns. Remember that when, why, and where are not interrogative pronouns. So we have only five. Remember that all of these, who, whom, which, what, and whose, kindly memorize them. So let's have some examples here. Practice number three. I want you to pause this video and answer this. Identify the correct interrogative pronoun. So if you're done answering, let me show you the correct answer from 1 to 5. So blank is your favorite color. So what's the answer? It's what is your favorite color? Blank shirt is this. What's the answer? Whose shirt is this? Next, blank do you mean by that? So whatsoever do you mean by that? Number 4, blank were you speaking with last night? Whom were you speaking last with last night? And number 5, blank of these two do you prefer? So the correct answer there is which. So those are the examples of sentences or questions with interrogative pronouns. Remember, they have we have only five interrogative pronouns. Next, let's go and discuss lesson number four, adjectives. So what are adjectives? Adjectives uh, describe a noun or a pronoun. So any word that describes a noun or a pronoun, examples, uh, beautiful, pretty, um, dark, something like that, gloomy. So these words that we use every day to describe a thing, describe a person, these words are actually called adjectives, all right? So an adjective answers the following, what kind, which one, and how many? So for example, for how many, we can say 50, several, few. These words are adjectives for which one and what kind. So what kind, golden, shiny, gleaming, something like that. So friendly. So automatically those words are called adjectives all right so let's uh, have some other examples so adjectives can be uh, in different um, can vary in different words so color size shape taste odor texture sound number and weather so adjectives can be colors like black and blue adjectives can be sizes like big huge large little short adjectives can be shape like oval round square taste bitters sour odor Musty, fresh, for texture, we can bumpy, slimy, smooth, for sound, harmonious, loud, pleasant, for number, we can say few, 50, many, sparse, or two, 
for weather we can say sunny dry foggy rain and windy now so these are the examples of adjectives so we can move on to the two types of adjectives we finished before so what are they so first we have descriptive adjectives descriptive adjectives are the words that literally describe a noun or pronoun so they, they directly describe a noun or pronoun so example we have pink flowers beautiful dress cardboard box heavy weights small animal new car old house so the words pink beautiful cardboard heavy small new old are examples of descriptive adjectives okay because they describe a noun or a pronoun directly now we go to the second adjective which we call the proper adjective because these proper adjectives are from or derived from proper nouns. Example, we have proper nouns America, Thailand, Japan, Spain, and Italy. And we have the these words American history, Thai film, Japanese students, Spanish lessons, Italian food. So these words, um, one to five, five words are considered to be examples of proper adjectives because they come from proper nouns. Okay, so these are adjectives over here all right so let's go through some examples so kindly pause this video again and try to find and underline the adjectives in the following sentences it's one to six it's quite easy you can start answering now all right if you're done answering let me show you the correct answers for number one they live in a beautiful house so the house here is the noun so what is describing the the word house so that will be beautiful. Lisa is wearing an elegant shirt today. So this word shirt is your noun. What word is describing the word shirt? That is elegant. And elegant is an adjective. For number three, this soup is not edible. So the soup is your noun. And edible is the one describing the word soup. Number four, he writes meaningless letters and symbols. So the word, the word meaningless is your adjective. For number five, this shop is much nicer. So nicer is your adjective. And finally, she wore a plain white gown. So we have two examples of adjectives in this number six, plain and white, because these words are actually describing the word gown. Okay, so let's go to the final lesson that we finished before, adverbs. So what are adverbs? Adverbs modify verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. Many adverbs end with ly. You make these adverbs by adding ly to adjectives. Some adverbs do not end in ly. So let's have some examples of adverbs. Now, we have she danced gracefully and the man speaks softly to his wife. Okay, so how do we know that gracefully is your adverb? So you're going to ask something like, like that starts with how. How did she dance? So the answer will be gracefully. How did the man speak? speaks to his wife and the answer will be softly so gracefully and softly are modifying um, the verbs here so like for example gracefully is modifying the word dance and softly is modifying the word speaks so that's why they are called ad adverbs all right so let's go to some adjectives and adding ly to each adjective will become adverbs so we have kind happy wonderful loud sad beautiful quick and sweet all of these words are adjectives but if we end it with ly if we add ly to the ending we're going to have adverbs so we have kindly happily wonderfully loudly sadly beautifully quickly and sweetly and we call these wor words as adverbs of manner okay so adverbs of manner remember that so we have also adverbs that do not end in ly okay so what are they so the the adverb of place the adverb of time and the adverbs of frequency have many examples of adverbs that do not end in ly example above abroad far away back here outside backwards behind below and down for the adverb of when or time now yesterday soon later tomorrow yet already tonight today then last year and we can use also the frequency always sometimes often uh, seldom and never so there are many words also that are adverbs that do not end in ly, okay? So you can pause this video and take note of all of these adverbs that we use every day, okay? So if you're done copying, let's go to the final practice for today's video. And I want you to answer the following. I want you to identify the adverb used in these sentences. You can start now. So if you are done, 
let me answer, give you the correct answers. So number one, he ate the chocolate cake greedily. So you're going to ask, how did he eat the, the chocolate cake? So you're going to answer greedily. So he gave us the money generously. Generously is your adverb. The child ran happily towards his mother. Happily is your adverb. He waited patiently for his brother to arrive. Patiently is correct. Roughly, he grabbed her arm. Roughly is your adverb. And finally, he quietly asked me to leave the house. That's quietly is your adverb. So all of them are ending in L-Y because I told you before, most of them, most of others that we use every day ends in L-Y. Okay. So those are our lessons that we finished before. Let's go to the activity worksheet for today. How to answer the worksheet, I'm going to show it to you right now. So this is your worksheet for today. So what are you going to do? You're going to answer question one to number five, question five. So what are you going to do for question number one? You're going to circle the correct answer. So look across the street at this or that restaurant. Does it look open? So select the correct um, definite, I mean demonstrative pronoun here. For question number two, you're going to select the correct indefinite pronoun. So you need to read so that you can find the correct answers. For number three, you're going to put in the correct interrogative pronoun. Remember the five interrogative pronouns that we just discussed. Kindly put them correctly here from one to five. And finally, for question number four and question number five, you're going to use the following in sentences. Okay, so the word adorable, the word deep, bloody, creepy, and several. You can use them, need, you need to use them in sentences. And for number five, you're going to use clearly, honestly, always, very, enough, one to five. Remember that this worksheet is required and this will be added into your final grade. So do not, do not forget to give it to me and send to my email. Alright, so that's our worksheet for today. So I think that's the end of our last lesson for the online learning. Thank you for watching all of my videos. This is Mr. Johnson. Thank you and goodbye.